Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Hollywood, the uh, current climate in Hollywood, which we talked about in a, a number of videos. But um, it's interesting. We covered the Golden Globes debacle a couple of days ago. We didn't even realize the Golden Globes were still a thing. My mom was even like, oh my gosh, I saw your video. She's like, yeah, that was insane. My mom was even knew about it because it was so stupid. Yeah, so a couple of days before the Golden Globes, uh, Ricky Gervais, who hosted them infamously in, in uh, 2020. Gloriously, I'd argue. But anyway. Gloriously, in 2020, uh, you know, he, he got called out for roasting the hell out of Hollywood and talking. Most people about, thought it was great and were like, yeah. Yeah, it's about time. And he talked about the, uh, the climate shift in Hollywood. And there's been a lot of discussion about this, about uh, uh, wokeness and virtue signaling and why it's so crazy now. In fact, there was another article uh, out there yesterday, I think it was the Daily Mail, and they're talking about how to survive in Hollywood now, everybody is trying to out virtue signal each other, trying to out woke each other because that's the only way that you're gonna stay in the club. Yeah, because there's all these heavy handed mandates and like, oh, this percentage has to be this, and this percentage has to be that. Are they qualified? Not necessarily, this, they're that percentage. And they wonder why their stuff isn't doing that great. Yeah, so it's it's survival of the wokest, and the only way to look woke is to virtue signal, but a lot of it is bullshit. And we, we see this time and time again, these celebrities, uh, you know, I, I mean, I love, you know, the celebrities, they're talking about how uh, we need to be more uh, uh, socialist as they sit in their multi-million dollar Yes, matches. I always love that. Or like they're telling people, go, yeah, do the riot, do this, do that. But Just make not sure my you, house. not my neighborhood. Yeah, not my neighborhood. Yeah, you go, you I go that, I met down the street. Burn it all down, just not my house. I like when you're putting like the black boxes up on like Instagram, but people had too many black boxes and then they got in trouble for that. Yeah, that has that has come up before. I mean, this is basically everybody is tripping over each other, trying to save their own asses so they don't get fed to the sharks. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work. At the end of That's the G4. <laughs> G4 TV. That's a whole nother, that is a whole nother fiasco. Yeah, people are getting tired of it. And I, look, I've said before, and I know people are getting sick of me saying it, the pendulum is swinging. The, that might not seem like it is. It might not seem like it is, but, but you, it is. you cannot keep this up indefinitely. It's exhausting. You're going to run out of people to cancel. Uh, you're going to run out of productions to cancel. You're going to run out of money because people are going to tune out. Yeah, you only get, you're going to like, and the thing is, what gets me is there are some very qualified people who aren't white men and they don't get it. They don't, they don't get the jobs either because they might not, they might not have the right presence on social media or they might not, you know, know the right people or whatever. So instead you're getting people that might not be the best fit for the job because you're too busy trying to base it on who knows who, who, you know, who, who's what color, who's what race, you know, what race, what's, who they sleeping mm. with, you know, what they like put between their legs. Yeah, and what we're seeing, though, is at the end of the day, the market always decides uh -huh. what sticks and what doesn't stick. And we're seeing this in comics now, too. We're seeing a lot of uh, people who were given uh, amazing opportunities in the comic book industry burn their bridges, burn down their, their opportunities because they get into the industry, they start causing problems, and they don't frankly have the talent to back up the the problems that they're causing well it's a purity test that no one can ever you know Nobody fully can. pass except for the people that are you know the ones giving out the tests yeah so we're gonna we'll talk a little bit about that uh pretty interesting we're gonna go back and read some of what he said and i think he's 100 percent right now ricky gervais uh has always been a pretty liberal guy you know and and true liberals are shocked and appalled at all the bullshit going yeah, on Yeah, right they now. didn't move. No. You know, it's just the extremism it came into play. Yeah, the uh, goalposts got shifted. And again, you know, this is sort of the unified theory of everything. Why is everybody out there on Twitter being obnoxious, saying stupid, dumb shit that you know they don't believe? And the reason they're doing it is to save their own asses, mm -hmm. uh, buy themselves a little more time, you know? But I think we're going to see a lot of people be like, you know what, this is exhausting. I'm not even going to try anymore. And is it really going to bite you in the ass? I mean, look at Gervais. Look at Dave Chappelle. You know, they're saying what they want to say. People are trying to cancel them. And they're just like, oh, screw you. I'm going to mm -hmm. do I'm going to do what I'm going to do. What are you going to do about it? And this it? will pass. I mean, it's going it, to pass. It's gonna pass. Yeah. They, they've tried this shit before. Not to the, I think to the extremes they've done like recently. But it will pass. Yeah, so let's let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 252,000 subs. Uh, thank you so much for the support. We do talk about pop culture. We talk about the entertainment industry, give our armchair opinions, our normie 
our normie opinions, and uh, we freaking loved Ricky Gervais roasting the hell out of Hollywood in 2020. Because a lot of people did. Yeah, a lot of people did, and he actually talks about it in this interview with The Sun. He's basically like, 10 years ago, you weren't allowed to roast celebrities because everybody loves celebrities, and now people are so sick of the virtue signaling and the wokeness that they're like, yeah, take them to task. Oh, I love they when they get it. up there at these award ceremonies and they use it, you know, as, oh, I'm going to use it now to, to to learn you all and what, how you should be. Yeah. And now sometimes there are celebrities out there, I think, that, that really put their money where their mouths are and they actually are out there trying to do something good and they're trying, you know, to help. And I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the pompous asshats that get up there and they tell you like about, well, make sure you recycle or make sure you do this or make sure you do that because as they themselves are like not doing it themselves, like, you know, it just blows my mind. And that's what he's kind of talking about. So he didn't host it this year. They didn't even... They there didn't wasn't anything to host. It was it. Twitter. Well, the Golden Globes basically virtue signaled itself into oblivion. They're looking at the Golden Globes and they're like, you guys are too white. You're too problematic. So they're, they're starting to eat themselves. Right. Well, you know? it's funny to me. They went to Twitter. Why yeah. would you go to Twitter? Because I think that Twitter is like the, you know, our, our, all the... the, the, the Big extremists are on Twitter. So let's go do it on Twitter because in there, they're completely oblivious to how the rest of the world views Twitter. They legitimately think that that's where they can meet most people, not understanding that on Twitter, most normies don't even go there. People avoid it like the plague. Yeah, uh, that's, that's just it. So what's going on is you've got Hollywood trying to... It's, it's a huge circle jerk, and it's the same with the comic book industry, too. The only people that are really paying attention to anybody on, on Twitter is journalists and other activists and other, other people in your industry. Normal people do not use Twitter, but the journalists go out to Twitter, and they, they, they'll pull a tweet, make an article out of it, and then the next thing you know, you're on CNN getting canceled for something yeah. or MSNBC for some shit. Right, because what's going on is they, they, need to, they need to make sure, like, why were they saying stupid things like when the riots are happening? Why are they saying stupid things at award shows? Because they have to deflect. Because they're like, they even said in that article, the only way to survive is to basically be the biggest cheerleader there is for the movement so that you don't get eaten. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that article. Very lengthy article kind of uh, outlining the, uh, I guess how a lot of people are getting fed up with all the wokeness and how everybody in Hollywood is. And the is, mandates. Yeah, shit. they're living in fear. They're living in fear of losing their jobs. So they're going to go along with it. Because they don't want to lose their jobs. Well, they'll be like, well, if you're not white, straight, and male, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. No, it always changes. Yeah. It's constantly changing. Like, next week, something else will be more important than this other thing. You know, it, it's it's ridiculous. How about we just make authentic stories, authentic voices, it, this authentically diverse. People yeah. want sincerity. They want honesty. They want good stories. They want good characters. They just want to be entertained. They do not want to be lectured. So, Ask Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, look at the ratings. And again, the market is going to determine what stays and and you know we talk a lot about this and i was thinking about this today uh you know with star wars we're gonna do more of a review of boba fett but we've seen you know the ridiculous stuff that they're putting into boba fett and it's like at the end of the day it's corporate owned entertainment they're they've got these ridiculous mandates it's it's basically star wars has become a uh science fiction lifestyle brand just like marvel's superhero flavored lifestyle brand for a, a giant corporation and if you don't like it, don't support it. Eventually, it will wither and die. Oh, if you don't, you're not allowed to not like it. If you don't like it, you're a bad person. No, that's that's, that's marketing spin. When they start doing that, that means they're threatened. They're threatened. Why would they threaten? Basically, you better... Because they think the same games they play in Hollywood work on normal people. Well, they, they, they've been using it, and it was working. It but was. it hasn't been now, because no. people, people are onto it. No, G4 TV. It doesn't work. You can't... Make your big comeback and start attacking the audience and expect them to stick mm -hmm. around. Uh, lots of other options out there. And you can't paint it with the broad brushes because you don't like a certain no. type of person. Not everybody in that group is going to be the same type of person. All right. So back to Ricky Gervais. Uh, they're trying to get through this and start again. That's with the Golden Globes. I don't think anyone's it's, even been invited. It's shit. It, it wasn't even a ceremony. Uh, it's true. You can't predict anything in this world. They could come back stronger than uh, ever. No. 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 Could be loved more than the last one. No, that did not happen. You never know. I don't take anything for granted anymore. I just keep plotting on and whatever happens, yeah, happens. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, last year, you told Leonardo DiCaprio. Most of the, this would uh, have been 2020. Uh, would have been, yeah. would have been uh, the last one. He was in 2020. Um, he was making fun of him having young girlfriends. Uh, James Corden is a fat pussy. But he lost weight. He's doing Weight Watchers or something now. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's the face of it now. So now he's a skinny pussy. And uh, he blasted celebrities for cozying up with uh, Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein. That's not That's, wrong. He wasn't wrong. Uh, he says the public's attitude, here we go. This is it. This is what's happening. 
The public's attitude to the rich and famous during the decade he presented the bash did a U-turn. The pendulum is swinging. You just haven't seen the results of that yet because a lot of these productions take years to hit the screens. Mm -hmm. You're going to see more of this. We're here in this back channel, too, that a lot of things are, are changing. He added, 2020 was my favorite one. That one captured the imagination the first time I did it 10 years ago. Everyone was like, ah, how can you talk to these wonderful multimillionaires? How can you talk to these beautiful people like that? We love celebrities. Well, that might have been them, not the general public. By the last one, it was like, God, just give it to them. We hate them. We hate celebrities. I know what it is. With all the austerity and people struggling, they think, what are these? why are these people lecturing me? They're going through an award ceremony and a limo are telling me to recycle. Yes, exactly. And they get up there on the podium and tell people that they should do this, that they should do that. And you live this charmed life. And and a lot of them came from nothing, but they forget where they came from. And they, they, they're they just so used to, you know, everybody kissing their ass and them being so self-important that they think everybody else feels the same way about them. And they don't. People are tired of it. There's people, you know, they're, they're don't have their, they lost their houses. Yeah. They didn't have money. Their, their kids don't have food. And you're up there like, but make sure you watch my, me win my award. But all my peers voted for me for. Watch me sing Imagine. Watch me, watch me tell you. From well, she my, actually made said that that yeah, was a mistake, yeah, she did, and she made fun of herself. So I'll give her that. I'll, she, I'll give Gal Gadot. She didn't blame everybody else. She blamed herself. Well, like Ellen DeGeneres, she was like in her mansion, and she's like, "Oh my god, I just hate being stuck." At oh home. my god, I think that's what happened too. I think when yeah. when the, the, that kind of stuff started, people were like, they were already fed up, and then they're like, "What the hell?" Like I'm stuck in you're you're stuck in a mansion. I'm stuck in a one bedroom apartment. By um, myself. By myself. I've lost family members. I've lost my job. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared to death. But yeah, good for you. You're. I, I'm so sorry to hear that uh, you're stuck on your... My pool boy can only come one day a week now. Oh, my God. I know, right? He has to wear a mask. You know, I'm just like... He's not pool, wearing pants, but pool, he has to wear a mask. My pool isn't as clean as it should be. I'm just oh, like, pool. I thought she says his pool isn't no, as clean. No, it's the pool. It be. Oh, I'll see. You took it someplace else. But yeah, people are just tired of it because they're just... They're tired of being lectured to. And I think they're tired of it, too, because... The last five or six years, Hollywood has been berating people. If they yeah. don't agree with you, if you, okay, half the country voted Republican. I'm sorry if you don't like that, but it's the truth. And, and you know, by you doing what you're doing in Hollywood, you're, you're literally insulting half the country. Um, literally, G4 literally is insulting yes. half I'm the country. I'm just like, you know. People vote different from me all the time. It's not my business how they vote. And I'm not going to say, oh, you're a shitty bad person just because you don't agree with me. Because there's things you're going to agree with people on all the time. And there's things that you're not going to agree with somebody on. And you, the only people you're going to agree 100% with is yourself. And, you know, because you're not. And it's absolute bullshit. And they're tired of being lectured to by pompous asshats who are up there getting all this money to act like they're important. They're not actual heroes. Real heroes are people like, you know, teachers and things like that, you know, doctors, people that are out there, like the people that were out, everybody was applauding during early COVID because they were out there risking their lives that they're now, you know, demanding they be fired now. <laughs> I, no, right. You know, I'm just saying, it's like, it's it's insane to me what how why these people think that they are, they deserve the money they get, why they think they're so important. And you know what the kicker is? There are YouTubers that are bigger than these celebrities. There are kids that, that more kids that know who Pokemon characters are than some of these celebrities. The, he literally said, he said, people just got sick of it, got sick of all the virtue signaling. They were like a beacon to aim their wrath at. People with nothing became tired of being lectured by people yes. who had everything. Um uh, Ricky is a man who, on the face of it, does have everything. They talk about how you know he is pretty wealthy himself. Um, he said, you have to make a decision as a comedian. Do you pander to the 200 most privileged people in the world in the room or the 200 million watching at home? Mm -hmm. now, in comedy, we're jesters. We have low status, so I'm down the mud with other peasants having a go. That's true. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's stupid, and people are tired of it. Uh, they're tired of it. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to see this in Hollywood, too, that, you know, the, the pendulum is swinging. People are like, we cannot, cannot keep this shit up. It's kind of like it reminds me in Labyrinth where David Bowie is like, you know, these expectations. I'm just exhausted trying to live up to your, your expectations. expectations. Yeah. And and that's that's sort of what I think a lot of people who've been doing this for a long time is like. And I, I, especially with guys like Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle. I think they're like, wait a second. They they basically told Hollywood to go fuck itself, and they're still making money. Yeah, they're fine. They're actually more. I would argue that Gervais and Chappelle current year are more popular than they've been in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. 
uh, because they told Hollywood to go fuck themselves. And then you have people like Patton Oswalt who goes to see his friend Dave Chappelle and then throws, went, him, under the bus. And throws him under the bus. I guess since it's not 2020, you're allowed to do that to yeah. a black guy. If it was 2020, he'd be using it to leverage himself attention. Yeah. And it's absolute shit. People are tired of the, the it's so fake. It's so phony. It's so um, wrought with bullshit. People just want, they want reality. They want real people. They want honesty. They want sincerity. They want, they want better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this article, and we're not going to go into it a whole lot. This article is ridiculous. You can find it out there. It's it's on the dailymail.uk. It's it's a very long read, but they basically, they talk to executives and agents and, and stuff um, and we did a video before where they basically said, hey, we don't want, it's not trendy anymore to have straight white guys working in Hollywood. So immediately on a project, rather than ask, is this the most qualified person? They're like, what is this person's race? It goes gender? beyond that. They're talking to people who aren't straight, white and male, yeah. even. And they're basically out like, and they're basically is... like, it's, it's just going to come around for us. It's just a matter of time. Yep. Um, they're talking about the club, the clubbiness of Hollywood uh, for pretty much everyone on the inside. It insists it should open up to those who had or. Uh, for have decades been kept out, but the heavy handed mandates, the databases, the shifting culture, constantly shifting. I said yep, that in which uh, pretty much all white men were assumed to have gotten their jobs because they had the right uh, tennis buddies or zip code or skin color raised the possibility of a new kind of clubbiness. Basically they're saying that they were starting to trade uh, uh, one, one uh, exclusionary practice for another. That's what they're doing. And it's still racism. It's still sexism. It's still bullshit. And it's like, I'm just, I think everybody's just getting tired of it. I mean, I think the country as a whole, the world as a whole, is just tired of this divisive, and that's what it is. It's divisive bullshit. It solves nothing. I, I love this quote because this is everything. This is why we're seeing so much virtue. I mean, there have always been insufferable celebrities look like Barbara Streisand and stuff that she's always been, you know, constantly like, shut up, Barbara. But. This is shut what up, Babs. Shut up, Babs. Uh, this is what they're saying. They said, the best way to defend yourself against the woke is to outwoke yep. everyone, including the woke, one writer said. And this is why you're seeing all these white guys, white women, saying the shit that they're saying, but then you never see them step down unless they're forced to. Yeah, like, okay, for example, Brie Larson. She went on and on and on about we need to bring more chairs to the table, which I don't disagree with. Like, I'm going to tell you straight up, I think that, that, that I think it needs to be more inclusive and diverse. But yeah, legitimately. Yeah, legitimately yes. and she was going on about that but i didn't see her giving up you know her seat no she should have been like you know what i feel really bad about this yeah monica rambeau was was that's pretty, what we're asking for pretty popular uh i should i should step down and let her take it maybe maybe in uh you know the marbles maybe monica will take over i'm just saying i mean she didn't she um, you know wanted to throw what men under the bus but she sure as hell didn't want to give her we need to bring more people in more diverse people i agree but there's a right way to do it and then there's just doing the same thing but say you know but it's good so it's, it's revenge not it's not fixing it, it's just revenge and it doesn't solve anything. It just it just aggravates the problems. And I think they need to find a way to to not aggravate the problem. Yeah, I mean there are uh, non-white people speaking out too because they're like this is stifling. A lot of them are stifling all the way across the board, and it's like this this doesn't help anybody. Again, the 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 goal was to let more people come to the table to have more diversity, but not trade one. Uh, uh, exclusionary practice. You know, Read for this. I have comments. Yeah, this was very interesting. Again, these are these are all Hollywood types that are speaking anonymously uh, to the paper. Everyone has gone underground with their true feelings about things. Um, well, actually, no. Said Mike White, the writer and director behind the hit HBO comedy drama The White Lotus. A lot of people on here they were not giving their names. Said if you voice things in a certain way, it can really have negative repercussions for you, and people can presume that you could be racist. Or you could be seen as a misogynist. They've been trying to use this shit for years. And here's the thing. You and I found, I, I have found personally, not always, but most of the time, the people le usually leveling those claims at you are usually the biggest racist misogynist people out there. Yeah, it's it's a shield. And, and we've seen this time and time again. It's like you, you're you protesting too much. Yeah, like if you what? have to, if that's your go-to for something innocuous, then that means, I did my, I, I, obviously you're the racist misogynist. How many? Misandrist or whatever. How many people it's associated the with the uh, the Me Too hashtag have actually been outed as perverts? Do you know how many misogynist you know? assholes I have to deal with? And the, and the thing about, well, you're not, a you know, male feminism. Women, women, let's know women, 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 women. And I'm like, but I am a woman. Well, not you. 
I see the most most misogynistic shit bags yeah. ever. Um, it, you know, supposedly standing up for whatever for you know. Oh, I'm on the side of right, and you're not because I'm going to make assumptions yeah. about you. You know, if you tell me you're not those things, I'm going to say you are because I decided. <laughs> Well, here's another writer who is speaking anonymously. And we, look, we get people here. And I know there are people working in Hollywood that go to other YouTubers and go to other outlets. Um, and they express these concerns. And guess what? A lot of them are not straight white dudes. Mm -hmm. They're like, the the environment now is toxic. You're not allowed to say anything. Um, if you don't give the appearance of being woke, you're not going to get hired. The ones that scream the most on Twitter are usually white women. Yeah, oh yeah, because they're trying to save their own asses. That's, that's what it's all about. Uh, here's another writer who, like most of the writers uh, they interviewed, they were afraid to speak openly for fear of never working again, said, I get so paranoid about even phone calls. It's scary. My close friends, my family are just like, don't say anything. It's one of those things. Will I be able to sleep at night if I say anything? Getting jobs in this town is so hard, and I'm very grateful to have a great job. If there's any so-called ding in my record, that would just be an argument against hiring me. No, fuck this. Mm -hmm. Fuck this. There are options. There are options. There are so many options. You know what? You can't get a job in that town. You go start your own studio in another town. You go crowdfund a movie. Here's someone else. I'm all for LGBT and Native American, Black, female, whatever yes. minorities have not been served correctly in the making content. Me too. Uh, whether it's television or movies or whatever. But I think it's gone too far. I don't love telling people that can't get work because they're not Black, Native American, female, or LGBTQ. Here's another one. Um, I saw down here, um, oh, where'd I see it? Oh, here. Uh, now they'll just say, sorry, diversity quotas. We're not allowed to hire you. I said a 48 year old white male comedy writer who's recently dropped by his agent. Yeah. I mean, Disney, they fly out, uh, and this is a white woman, uh, the head of their, their, uh, ABC. She said they passed on a couple of really good sitcoms because they didn't meet the diversity mandates. Um, and then, you know, they were talking about, you know, Sydney Poitier and I know Sydney Poitier was like, you know, would you stop? talking to me like I'm I'm just black and that's it. Yes, that, you know, he, yes. He was very angry about that because they were like, he's like, you can ask me all kinds of questions. They had an audio clip. Like, you can ask me all kinds of questions about, you know, the you know my career and there are lots of other things I'd like to talk about. But all you want to talk about, all you want to zero in on is I'm a black guy. Yes, and I, I think that sums up all of this. I think a lot of people who aren't white, straight, and male, well, you know, they get tired of just, you know, things that, that they happen to be. It's more about that then like that that is your whole character i'm black i am a lesbian i'm you know asian i mean it's like that's stupid here we have a writer and producer zach stentz um who was a screenwriter on agent cody banks and the original thor a really toxic thing that does happen is that agents will tell their clients especially white clients when they don't get a job oh yeah it's because they had to hire a minority okay writer. see that's not fair either because yeah. then that's just making people hate they're just, they're just like they're making people hate you're each making other. hate you're, you're making, making hate, hate. hate for all of this you're trying and to resentment. be fair all it's doing is causing hate and resentment yeah we had years where you know it still needed work i'm not gonna say it didn't but people weren't at each other's throats like this. And people were like, oh, that's okay. I, I understand that person was better suited for the job than me. Not, well, they got it because they're white. Or they got it because they're black. Or they got it because they don't, like, sleep with men. You know, it's, it's just stupid. It's causing problems. Here, uh, one showrunner, afraid to send his emails to us out of fear of them accidentally winding up on the wrong screen, agreed to show us correspondence with agents, writers, and studio chiefs. Here's some of the, some of the emails. Uh, this one's a dead end. They're going to limit the search to women and by POC candidates. How tied to hiring him are you? There are some internally that don't like the idea of hiring a white guy. I wish I had a better way to frame it. I hate this shit. Uh, studio now telling us this job must go to a female slash by POC writer. Sorry, it sucks. When we wrapped up, the showrunner said this is all going to end in a giant class action lawsuit. You know, I can tell you in the comic book industry, right, coming from the comic book industry, this was, it was kind of a precursor there about 2013, 2014. There was definitely a switch that was flipped where they were looking exclusively for certain kinds of people uh, to get into the comic book industry. And if you wanted an agent or you wanted to get into like more mainstream publishing through one of the book publishers or whatever, you had to meet the criteria. And I would say it's very similar to Hollywood right now, where they're basically there's certain kinds of people they're looking for, and there's certain kinds of people that just you're not you're not trendy. You're yeah. not trendy. Well, here I said someone said the human resources departments at studios and streaming services are washing complaints directed at white male showrunners just for doing their jobs. It's gotten to a point where I won't give notes on a script any longer to a woman or a person of color because if you do, and you know, treasure, even because you're on the same team and you're just trying to make it the best thing possible. 
Well, look at what happened with uh, with the Superman, Superman and Lois. Um, the one uh, Black Raider was angry that they wouldn't make. Oh my God! Yes, I forgot make about that. Superman's parents black, and they're like, "Well, why? Why? Would, why would they? Why would they?" And then I guess she got fired for being. She got fired for being difficult, and she made it. She got fired for being black. It was like, mm -hmm. no, you were arguing with the showrunners constantly, and that's why you got fired. Sorry. Now, now they're gonna like. I, I'm really thinking it's gonna get to a point with Hollywood where they will literally burn down studios and start over to get rid of the problem. I, I don't know. I just know there's a problem. I know that we are seeing a problem, you know, uh, here. Um, it, it was a noble idea. You need to make sure things are more diverse, which a lot of people agree with. It's just executed very poorly. And now it's becoming, you know, how can you out virtue signal everybody else so you stay, you know, with a job. Mm -hmm. And then you have the fact that the general public overall, they're all doing this in Hollywood, but it doesn't really matter because the general public's full of their shit the whole way around. Like they're all up their asses and they're all out of touch and they're all a bunch of idiots. So, you know, it doesn't really matter to the day. It's all going to burn down, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're freaking out about YouTube and stuff like that. They're trying to shoehorn themselves in there. Look at this. Another showrunner in his mid-50s. You're not allowed to pick your staff anymore. Studios won't let you interview anybody who isn't a person of color. He added that the culture of documenting even the slightest of slights makes him anxious. I'm sitting in a room trying to run a show with a collection of people I don't trust. Uh, and that has nothing to do with race. It has to do with the fact that, again, every slight, every grievance, you, you'd like be afraid to you know, give orders. You're supposed to be the showrunner. You have to tell people well, how to do their jobs. I think we could end on this. This, is a, this sums it up perfectly. The politicization of content production, creative said, was going to be the industry's death knell. Yes, thank you. That sums it up pretty well. Um, the, everything people have had trouble with, like shows, if you don't like a show, it's not because the show wasn't good or because you, you personally just didn't like it. It's because you're a shitty person. Doctor Who, we have to shove agenda. Everything has to have an agenda. Everything has to be some kind of lecture. People, they go to the movies because they want to have something, they want to have a good time. They want to be have something fun. They don't care if people, you know, are, are not white or they are white or whatever. They didn't for years until they made it a, a sticking point. Yeah. You know, they just want to have fun. They just want good characters and good stories. And they just want, you know, to be happy for a change. And they're not allowed to even have that. The market is going to decide because you can't, as long as there are alternatives, and we know that Hollywood tries to eliminate the alternatives, they try to control the media, they try to control the, the flow of spice, but there is going to come a time when a majority of people, talented people working in the industry, regardless of gender, color, sexual identity, religion, whatever, are going to get fed up with this shit, and they're going to walk away and go start a Hollywood somewhere else and be like, we're going to go just go make good stuff again without the mandates, without the studio bullshit, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the market will support that. Quentin Tarantino. It's like the idea. It's like ideology trumps art. Ideology trumps individual effort. Ideology trumps good. Yeah. And we'll end it on that. Yeah. Go read the article. Cause there's a lot. They talk about some shows and some different things in there, but yeah. So, uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.